Hello and welcome to another episode of Discover the Treasure where we talk about lesser known and interesting facts of this region. Most of us are fascinated with the great pyramids of Egypt or the ancient burial customs of the Mayans. But how many of us are familiar with the Moidams of Assam, the burial places of the Ahom royalty and nobility? Do we know that Moidams are much more than normal tombs and graves? that they are an architectural marvel having no equal in India. This episode is not just about Moidams though. I promise I shall be doing an exclusive video about Moidams, trying to give you guys a fair idea about how the Ahom kings queens, their children and other nobles were buried after their departure from this world. Today, rather we are going to talk about two extraordinary individuals whose Moidams are located in Dibrugo, right next to National Highway 37. These two great individuals were Alon Dehingya Borborua, a war hero who saved Assam from foreign dominance and his son Deka Dehingya Borborua, whose Moidams are located right here. These two individuals held the much esteemed position of the Borborua under three different Ahom kings. In fact, it is because of a huge pond dug by one of these Borborua's that the place itself came to be known as Borborua, although much later. Now, before proceeding any further, let's try to understand the meaning of Borborua. During the Ahom rule, the office of the Borborua was one of the most important and powerful offices. Barbarwa was a member of the Council of Five, a council whose powers were next only to those of the king. Although a direct comparison won't be accurate, but the position of the Barbarwa was no less than that of a modern-day cabinet minister. The office of the Barbarwa, however, hasn't always been there since the beginning of the Ahom rule. As the Ahom territories expanded, two new offices were created, that of the Barfukon and the Barbarwa by the great Ahom king, Pratap Hingho. While the Bor Fukon was in control of the area to the west of Koliabor, which is in modern-day Nogao district, Barbarua used to enjoy administrative and judicial powers in those areas to the east of Koliabor, which were not under the sphere of influence of the three Dangoriyas, that is Burha Guhai, Bor Guhai and Bor Patra Guhai. Now that we know the meaning of the term Barbarua, let's proceed with the main story. One of these Moidams, which are right here, belongs to the great Alon Dehingya Borborua, who held the position, or I'd rather say, who held the much esteemed position of the Borborua for more than 10 years due to his unmatched leadership, bravery and abilities. Alon Dehingya Borborua was initially the Borborua under King Sulikfa, better known as Lora Roja, whose reign was of just two years. He, however, continued to hold that much esteemed position for many more years under the illustrious rule of King Godhadar Hingo, the husband of the legendary Ahom princess Joymuti Kori, who went on to become the quintessential example of extreme sacrifice and bravery across India. One of the most important highlights of the career of Alon Dehingya Borborua was his incredible leadership in the Battle of Itahuli, which was fought in the year 1682. In that decisive battle, which took place around a decade after the Great Battle of Sarai Ghat, the Assamese army or the Ahom army inflicted a crushing defeat on the Mughals, chasing them as far as the Manas River. That battle, which was fought on both land and water, was of utmost significance as it marked the end of the long-standing Ahom and Mughal conflicts. Alon Dihingya Borborua was the hero of the Battle of Itahole. In fact, it was under his leadership and supervision that the Assamese army occupied the highly strategic Itahuli fort, which is located at the present-day location of the famous Sukreshwar temple of Guwahati. Taking control of the Itahuli fort from the Mughals was a clear sign of victory. It was the final nail in the coffin of the Mughals, who retreated as far as the Manas River, never to invade the Ahom kingdom again. It was in recognition of the exemplary service offered by this Barbarua to the Ahom kingdom that King Godado Ringo had an entire road built and later dedicated this road to the Barbarua. Known as the Barbarua Ali, that famous road started from a place close to the iconic Gorgam Ali of Sivsagar and came all the way till Mohanaghat in Dibrugar. 
Now most of the parts of that iconic Barbaroa Ali have been replaced by the National Highway 37. It was again the same Alon Dehingya Barbaroa who had the famous Thaura doll of Sipsagar built in the year 1683-85. That brick built temple which also has a tank adjacent to it now stands along National Highway 37 just a heartbeat away from the historic town of Sipsagar. Now I'm heading towards the famous Borborua Pukhuri or pond, a more than 300 years old pond that is now located within the premises of the Borborwati estate of the Bruder. Beautiful pond which is spreading over several acres of land and which is even older than the iconic Bor Pukhuri and Gori Sagar tank of Sipsagar is said to have been built by Deka Dehingya Borborua in 1701 AD. Deka Dehingya Barbarua was the son of Alon Dehingya Barbarua, who was appointed to the office of Barbarua by King Rudrohingo. Interestingly, the historical significance of this pond came to light only with the discovery of a rock inscription by a group of workers working at a nearby location in the year 1964. That rock inscription, which dates back to the period of Deka Dehingya Barbarua, throws much light on the historical significance of this pond. That inscription also tells us about a few land grants being made by Deka Dehingya Barbarua with the king's permission. It is also said that the present Barbarua Hat or Bazaar that sits on either side of National Highway 37 previously used to sit on the banks of this historic Barbarua Pukhuri until this Pukhuri became a property of the Barbarua Thi estate. Both Alon Dehingya Barbarua and his son Deka Dehingya Barbarua were brave and accomplished officers of the Ahom Kingdom. Their acts of valor need to be preserved in a much better way. Their legacy needs to be conserved in a much better way. Their rich contributions to Assam need to be promoted far and wide. Although these two Barbarwas are a significant part of Assam history, not much is known about them. Therefore, through this video, I would appeal to the state government, which is doing and which is trying very hard to preserve the ancient monuments and heritage of Assam to pay a little more attention to the two moidams of this great officers of the Ahom Kingdom. Thank you so much for watching this video and do not forget to like this video, share this video and please subscribe to our channel Discover the Treasure.